Hello, hello. Welcome. <laughs> Welcome to a place at the table. Great to have you all here. What a beautiful build. What's that? Okay. That one, two, one, two. Yep. Is that coming through? It's not as loud. One, two, one, two, one, two. Yeah, that's definitely, yeah. Great to be here. Here's my man, Andy. Hello everybody, I'll just wait for people to take a seat, make yourselves at home. <laughs> um, yes, thank you so much for joining us today at A Place at the Table. Um, and to those who are tuning in online or tuning, on, tuning in later on um, to the live stream, it's great to have everybody here with us today. So um, my name is Mary McPherson. I work for Edinburgh City Mission. This is an Edinburgh City Mission event. And I work as a mission strengthener for the Nations Ministry. And the aim of the Nations Ministry is to stimulate and strengthen the mission of ethnic minority and foreign language fellowships in Edinburgh through listening and learning. And um, so a part of that is giving people from diverse backgrounds um, from different churches in Edinburgh, from different ethnic minority groups, from different languages, a place at the table, giving them a place at the table to discuss these things. Um, so today is going to take the format of an interview between Andy, our interviewer, and Alex, our guest today. And we're really grateful to have them both here with us. Um, I'm going to let them introduce themselves more in a little moment. I'm not going to steal any of their thunder. Um, so it's going to take the format of an interview. And at the end, we're going to open it up to some questions. We're going to have a question time. 
So everyone who's here in person, feel free to think of questions, ask questions at the end. And also there's an opportunity for people who are tuning in on YouTube to um, comment a question, either during the event or afterwards as well. Um, yeah, just some housekeeping. We've got toilets through that door there at the back if you need the toilet. And the fire exit is the door through which everybody came um, whenever you arrived. I'm just gonna say a word of prayer and then we'll get going with the interview. So let's pray. And dear Lord, we thank you so much for our unity in Christ. We thank you that you give us a picture of the Trinity um, as a diverse, you're a diverse Trinity of three different persons, but also united and equal. And we thank you for that picture. And we just pray that you will be within this conversation. We thank you for the opportunity to have a conversation about life as your people in Christ. We pray that you'd bless this conversation and bless our discussion as well, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Over to Andy and Alex. Thank you. And let me add my welcome to Maddie's welcome. It's so great to, to have you here for this conversation. So I'm Andy Longway. I'm the minister of London City Presbyterian Church, and it's been my privilege for the uh, last few months to be involved in these conversations to interview our guests and today we have Alex who is the senior lecturer of theology and world Christianity here in Edinburgh at uh, Edinburgh University and we're going to hear much more about Alex in just a moment and so as Mary said uh, this will take an interview format we, we have some basic questions that we put to all our um, guests uh, but really to, to hear from them about their own experience when it comes to the issue of race. And often when we think of perhaps uh, race and justice issues, we can limit, it, limit, have a limited view and sometimes think in terms of black and white. And so I think we're, we're in for a treat today as we have our worldview um, expanded as we speak to, to Alex here. So let's get going. And Alex, why don't you tell us a bit about yourself, a bit of bio, but we'd love to know where you're from, about your upbringing, and we'd love to hear how you entered into this culture. So if you can kick us off there, that'd be great. Sure thing. Thank you, Andy, and thank you, Mari, for, for the introduction and, and the welcome, and thank you all here and online, wherever you are. Um, <laughs> Um, so, I'm Alex Chow. Uh, I was born and bred in Southern California, a suburb of Los Angeles, um, as you perhaps tell from my accent. Um, I uh, grew up in uh, a Buddhist home um, and uh, became a Christian in my high school years. Um, Growing up, uh, much of my early experience uh, in a suburb of Los Angeles that didn't have uh, many uh, immigrants uh, from Asia at the time. Um, my, my upbringing, I uh, really struggled my, with my identity um, as a Chinese American. Uh, to put it plainly, I wanted to be white. Um, that was what I saw and that was what I was told was the norm. And that's what I wrestled with uh, for much of my, my childhood. Um, Later on in life, uh, as, as Andy mentioned, I, I, I work now in, in the University of Edinburgh, uh, but I, uh, that, that took a journey by itself. Uh, um, I went into theological training uh, in North America, um, uh, Birmingham, uh, UK, for my PhD. Went to China to do a postdoctoral uh, research related to my area of interest, which was uh, mainland Chinese theology. Um, and then later on came here in 2013. So I've been uh, in, the, in and out of the UK for about a, a decade, uh, or, or over a decade. Um, but reflecting on my journey, I think um, early on, uh, I, I think why I got into sort of academic and theological training um, differed a bit from how I see it retrospectively. And I think because of my upbringing, I, I think part of why I, I wanted to study at the time mainland Chinese Christianity and theology was I was wrestling with my own identity. And as a Chinese American Christian, I, perhaps simplistically, I thought, well, you take out the American and you have the answer, right? You figure that out and you can figure out everything else. And so, so that, that was a part of my own uh, 
uh, retrospectively, I, I see as, as part of my journey and, and how um, I uh, sort of got into what I do academically, but also um, as, as uh, I've been in the UK all these years, uh, I've been involved in uh, different uh, Chinese churches here in the UK as well. So. Mm. Could you tell us of any experience you've had whilst in the UK of racism? Have you been on the receiving end of yeah, that, that's a, a great question, um, very important one. Um, I, I think for myself personally, um, overt racism was, has not been something that I have been, um, you know, for better or for worse, I, I have not experienced um, overt racism. It, uh, uh, racism has tended to come um, in more subtle ways. Um, I could give an example of just a couple weeks ago, I was at the, at the, um, the supermarket and uh, something fell out of a person's, uh, uh, you call them trolleys here, right? Uh, sorry, uh, out of his trolley and, and I went up and you know, picked it up for him. And he, he, he doesn't look at me and he says, shh, 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 and, and I was taken aback by that for many reasons. First of all, he was kind of mispronouncing the Chinese. Um, second of all, it was uh, a little presumptuous that I was, uh, that I, my native would be Mandarin. Uh, actually, it's, it's, it's not. You know, there, there's a couple other Chinese languages I, I grew up with. Um, and uh, he, he also was mispronouncing things. Uh, um, but but it, was, it was a sense in which, uh, well, this, this is how I address you, and I, I don't even look at you, right? Which, which took me by surprise. And I, so I think that that's kind of a, an episode for me that in, in many instances I've, I've experienced people ad addressing me or, or trying to make um, what I would say Chinese sounding uh, phrases at me. Um, but also um, when I was living in Birmingham, um, I was living in Birmingham and I was you know, living in you know, a, a rental um, place for, for a number of years. And, my neighbor, which you know, I was cordial with and often spoke to, you know, one day he says, oh, so, so where are you from? I was like, oh, can't you tell from my accent? And he responds, oh, I don't know, international school? I was like, oh, so I can't, yeah, you know, I was a little shocked by that because the presumption was that if I suppose I, I look a certain way, and I have, I think, clean English, uh, uh, a non-accented, um, or an American accent, you know, that, that it comes from an international school as opposed to America, right? Um, and so there, there are instances uh, like that that I think have been more subtle um, than, um, than overt. Have there been any experiences within the context of the church that have been subtle? Or? Um, yeah, I mean, I, I think one of the experiences um, was uh, when, when we moved uh, actually here in Edinburgh um, and we were uh, trying to situate ourselves in a church locally and we, we'd been attending um, one church um, for a number of years and you know, I, 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 I taught on its uh, you know, um, sort of adult education program and, and you know, we, were, we were part of the church for about uh, three years, and, um, and it was interesting that every, uh, quite often, we would be met by people and uh, people sitting next to us and saying, oh, is this your first time? I was like, oh, no, actually, we've been here for quite some time, and you asked me that last week, you know, and, and it, was, it was really hard for us to establish ourselves um, within the church community that we'd been going to for about three years, um, and actually, I um, when uh, we didn't intend this, but, but later on we, we attended one of the local um, Chinese churches here in Edinburgh. Uh, it was because, uh, well, basically we, we had jet lag and we missed uh, church service, so we, we slept in. Um, but we went to the, the afternoon service for this Chinese church. And I remember driving home from that service, and my, my wife is sitting next to me, and she's tearing up and, and starts to cry, and she says, can we go to this church? 
And I said, uh, sure. <laughs> Why? <laughs> and, and, and she said, I, I just want people to l love our family, love our kids, not just because they're cute and want to play with them, but really invest in their lives. And, and that was really a, a sign for, for me and for us that um, where we had been going previously um, didn't fully embrace us and didn't fully uh, welcome us, even though we were involved in you know, different activities in the church and, and whatnot. That's really helpful. Thank you for sharing that. The, the next question is, uh, um, how is race and, and your faith intersected? And can you maybe just speak to, yeah, thinking about the, the issue of race and justice in terms of being a Christian and, and the intersection? And, and maybe even add to that, is your, is your role as a, in the academy, any thoughts um, between the yeah, th those are both great questions, very big questions. Um, uh, I guess with, with the first one, uh, I've, I've kind of alluded to it a, a little bit already, but um, uh, I, I think within sort of Chinese culture in particular, there is a very strong emphasis on community um, and particular ways that community is perceived, right? Um, and so I, I think for myself and, and as, as a family, you know, when we, uh, when we try to show um, love to others, you know, it, it involves bringing them into our home, you know, quite literally, and feeding them, you know. Um, the, the, the stereotypical um, Chinese mom, okay, uh, the greeting of a stereotypical Chinese mom is, I'm uh, oh, sorry, Chinese mom is, um, <laughs> is, uh, have you eaten yet, right? So my mom, you know, even till today, you know, when, when, I, when I fly into LA, I land, you know, make a phone call to my, my mom to t tell her that I'm, I'm on my route. First thing she asks, have you eaten yet? I'll prepare some food for you, right? I, I don't recall my mom ever saying I love you in my life, but I can tell you the the umpteen times that my mom has asked me, have you eaten yet? And wanting to provide food. And so for, for me, I think um, part of that means that in terms of spirituality and, and the understanding of what a community is, is, is textured by the sense of community bringing people into the home, feeding, you know, quite literally feeding people. Mm -hmm. Um, to be uh, such an important aspect, uh, and I could I could even say that uh, oftentimes in in the the, the Chinese church uh, that I, I attend, you know, oftentimes it's uh, the, the the tea time afterwards seems to be longer than the church service itself, you know, <laughs> because it's it, you know the food and the interaction across the food is so so important. Mm. Um, so I think it, it, in, in terms of community and, and how that translates into spirituality and expressions of love mm -hmm. it, it becomes quite, quite key. Um, in terms of your question of uh, academics, um, I mean, that, that's a, we could spend a lot of time on that by itself. Um, um, I am an academic, so. Um, uh, but I, I think I'll, I'll say two things to that. One is, um, in particular, um, if you look at air, air, all the theological institutions in the UK, um, there's basically a, a, a handful, a literal handful of anybody from a Chinese background mm -hmm. in the theological faculties. Um, and yet at the same time, you know, in the University of Edinburgh and everywhere else, you know, there is a huge push to get more Chinese students. Right, and so it, it, it's it's kind of this uh, um, uh, disconnect between the 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 welcoming of students and therefore international fees and, and all the the monetary things that come out of that, but less so the encouragement of uh, those to to teach and you know those with that kind of a background um, to 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 train and and you know with with immigration, you know, these days um, in the UK, uh, you know, that, that demographic is shifting quite a bit. 
Um, and, and it becomes more and more important when you have people of Chinese background within uh, your churches. Um, related to that, perhaps, is uh, um, there's often this discourse in academia about um, racism in terms of B-A-M-E, right? Uh, we've, you know, I had to learn this term when I came to the UK. Um, uh, and the A is, uh, is generally Asian uh, background or and minority ethnicity. But in much of the UK, Asian refers to South Asian as opposed to Chinese or East Asian or South, Southeast Asian. And so it's kind of left out of the conversation. And um, academically, there, there's been a growing uh, attempt to, to talk about another acronym, B-E-S-E-A, British East and Southeast Asian. Um, whether it's a better term or not, it, it, the, the point is that you know, it's, it's trying to search for a, a way to um, bring out the voices of those from East and Southeast Asia that have been overlooked academically. Um, so, that, so that is a, a move within mm -hmm. academia. Mm -hmm. That's really helpful. I, I recall just two things when we, we had our first conversation was many of the, the Chinese Christians in, in, say, a UK context are first generation. Mm. So they, they don't have a heritage, but many of us who are Brits, we have a rich Christian heritage that we can point back to and we the fathers and mothers of the faith. Sure. Could you just speak to that? Of what's, what's the reality like for first generation Chinese Christians living in the UK? And, and, how, and, and just thinking of how the church can help them and the academy and discipleship. Um, that's a really big question. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't recall this from last time, but <laughs> that, that, that's fine. Um, yeah, I mean, I think that that's a really good question. Um, there's, uh, of course, in in the um, the recent news and and sort of uh, uh, story of ethnic Chinese in the UK has been uh, the new Hong Kong BNO visa route. Um, uh, the, the latest home office stat was about 133,000 visas have been issued. Um, and if you compare that to the last census, not the one that just happened, but the, because we still haven't, don't have that data, but compare that to the census just before that, we had 433,000 uh, 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 people of Chinese uh, heritage. So that's like a 30% bump, wow. okay, just in, in a year and a half, okay? A 30% bump in the, in the population. And <clears throat> so, and, and I think in, in many ways, uh, you know, m many churches have, have tried to respond to this um, uh, growth, and uh, in particular, there, there's a welcome Welcome Churches has put in a Welcome UK, uh, HK, um, uh, or UK HK uh, kind of initiative. Um, I'm a little bit, um, I'm a little bit two ways with uh, these initiatives. On, on the one hand, I'm, I, I'm, I, I think they're great because it, it encourages uh, thinking about cross-cultural uh, engagement and uh, especially with uh, waves of migration. Um, and, and in many ways, uh, you know, I, I mentioned briefly that there's, you know, uh, a couple of Chinese churches here in the UK, in, in Edinburgh. Chinese churches have been in the UK since the 1950s, at least. Um, Chinese Christians have been in the UK since the early, you know, 20th century, and actually much earlier than that, even, you know, in terms of um, uh, coming in and out of, of the country. And... And in, in some ways, um, some of the training that's happening now is, is something that kind of w would have been nice to have had, you know, half a, half a century ago, right? Um, when there were influxes of Chinese, especially coming in and working in the catering business, you know, this, this is why we have Chinese takeaways everywhere, you know, um, it's because of uh, uh, certain immigration laws in the, in the 50s and 60s and 70s that, that, that encouraged that. Um, but also, um, there, there seems to be um, a, a sense in which welcome is um, about hospitality 
And hospitality, if you think about it, is about a guest that comes and goes home, right? So, so theologically, I think we need to rethink our, our language of what, hospi- you know, what, is it hospitality that we're talking about, okay? So, so I think there's a theological question to be asked there. But also, there's a question of, actually, there is a long heritage of Chinese in the UK. Mm-hmm. And, you know, the, um, the UK HK uh, stuff, uh, you know, one of the things that it has been highlighted is we don't want another wind rush. Okay? That, that, that tends to be like a, a tag on, if, if you look at the, the literature. Um, and, and I think it's true in the sense that we, we, we should be, um, we should not repeat the mistakes of our past. Um, but actually, the racism that is experienced by Chinese has a much longer history uh, than we realize, actually. Um, in the 1940s, 45, 46, after uh, the British uh, government used a lot of Chinese seamen for the, th- throughout the two world wars um, in particular, uh, and many were, uh, uh, became resident in the Liverpool area. There was uh, this home office directive, I think it's 213-926. You remember that, okay? Um, <laughs> but it was, it, the, the official name was the Compulsory Repatriation of Undesirable Chinese Seamen. I'm not going to put any gloss on that, right? But, you know, that, that by itself is it, um, several thousand Chinese seamen, former Chinese seamen, were deported. And these were men who, many of them, had wives, local wives, and children, and those families thought that they were abandoned because they weren't even notified of this, right? And it was only, um, only like uh, two or three years ago that the, that the parliament ever, the Westminster parliament ever mentioned this policy. And, and just earlier this, this year, uh, the re- internal report of a home office came out and was saying, yeah, this was institutional racism, you know. Um, and, and, and so I think, you know, th- there's a long history of racism with Chinese, um, that we are not aware of. Um, and it's a complex picture because oftentimes the discourse is very, uh, of race is very black and white, mm-hmm. if you will. Mm-hmm. Um, and the racism that is experienced by Chinese historically and in, in, in the present is, in, in some ways, is very subtle. In other ways, is, is, it comes out um, and is not reacted against in the same ways, mm-hmm. um, and it's forgotten. And yet, it, it seems so important to be aware of that history, uh, especially when we're, we're trying to welcome these new um, immigrants into the country. What does that mean? Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. yeah, that's very helpful. Those are all my questions, but I, am, I, I can imagine that there's a lot of food there for thought. So I'll, I'll put it out to, to you. Do you have any questions you'd like to ask Alex? What kind of theology do I teach? Uh, that's that's a um, well. So my my own academic research is mainly on theology in the uh, 20th century, 20th and 21st century in China. When I came here, I I, I said, "Can I teach that?" And I was told, "No." <laughs> <laughs> and the reason being that we have students coming from all over the world, and um, so. Um, I, I tend to teach uh, theology in all parts of the world. Um, so uh, I, I, I focus on non-Western expressions of theology. Um, so I teach a class, uh, for instance, called Theologies of World Christianity. And I go through pretty much every, every place I could find a, something written on um, in the world and talk about the theology uh, of the different parts of the world and, and how it re- reflects and... and and um, offers different nuances to more traditional understandings of Christian theology. Yeah. Can you define theology? 
can I define? <laughs> I feel like I'm being interviewed. <laughs> um, the, the, classically, I would say that theology is faith-seeking understanding. So coming out of Christian faith, um, wanting to understand more about God and the relationship between God and his people. Um, so in, in, in the classes I teach, you know, oftentimes I, I focus on the ideas of, of how people wrestle with that relationship, um, how uh, different people perceive uh, Christ and uh, speak about Christ, often with an inflection, uh, mindful of their cultural backgrounds, um, often with the social political realities that they face. Um, and, and so as such, it, it tends to highlight different aspects that perhaps are not emphasized as much in, um, in the UK traditionally. Um, Um, well, because I'm uh, teaching in the context of the University of Edinburgh, um, and we have students coming from lots of backgrounds, not necessarily Christian backgrounds. Um, so in my teaching, I tend to offer more of a, um, a removed um, engagement. So it's more uh, of a descriptive engagement about how others have spoken about uh, God and, and, and his relationship with the world. Um, so in, in terms of my teaching, I, I tend to not describe so much my own um, personal theology because that, uh, yeah, in, in the context of a secular university, that, that's a difficult, uh, that, that is a difficult and controversial um, standing point. So it's a, it's a difficult one. Uh, but in my own writing, I do reflect on uh, how I understand God from from the Bible, from my own experience, uh, and and how I I uh, reflect on the, the the traditions of the church and how the church has historically uh, seen things for better or for worse, um, and put that in conversation. Thanks. Lots of questions here. So, oh, I think you were first. Is that right? Yeah. I think. Oh, yeah, repeat back the question. I will do. Repeat the question, yes. Um, thank you, Mr. Minister. It's really interesting. If you're able, could you talk a little bit about your experience of um, the Chinese church in the UK and the church in China? Okay. Can, can you be a little more specific on that? This has come from a place of total ignorance. I okay. don't know much about Christianity in the context of, of China. So okay. Okay, that's like all, uh, all, all my research in, in, in a nutshell. <laughs> um, so, so the question that was raised was, uh, what is the relationship between uh, Christianity, Christianity in China and Chinese Christianity in the UK? Um, uh, broadly speaking, Christianity in China can date back to the 7th century. So the earliest archaeological evidence we have is of the seventh century. Most people think it's um, much later. Um, uh, and we have every single tradition has gone into China historically. The most um, pregnant sort of missionary uh, enterprise uh, came after the Opium Wars, uh, which you know, we could talk about colonialism and, and the history of British colonialism with that, if, if you like. But um, it, it was opened up in the 1800s out of the Opium Wars, and Protestant, Catholic, Orthodox missionaries of every denomination from every Western country came in. Um, uh, but because of the course of the 20th century with communism and so forth, um, all missionaries were kicked out. And um, broadly speaking, you have the dominant forms of Protestantism and Catholicism at both legally registered and 
not so legally unregistered uh, expressions and is dominantly Protestant or Catholic. Um, we're, estimates range, but somewhere in the 10% 10, 10 of the population would be Christian, depending on who you're asking. Um, in the UK, uh, that's much more complicated because um, the, while the pre-war uh, pre period is dominated by migrants from, uh, from what we call main, mainland China today, um, after the, the wars, the largest population would be from Hong Kong migrants. Hong Kong, Mal Malaya, Malacca, Malaysia, and Singapore um, migrants would be coming in, basically Commonwealth, uh, because of the Commonwealth relationship. Um, and much of Christianity in the UK uh, is indebted to the, the, um, the evangelistic work of, um, of a man by the name of Stephen uh, Wang or Wong, however you pronounce it. You could pronounce it different ways, um, but who who looked? He was in Liverpool. He was a Methodist, actually, and he he went to Liverpool in the nineteen nineteen fifty, and um, at a Methodist mission meeting, and they were talking about, oh, China's closed up. We can't go to China and all that. And he, and he says, what about the Chinese on your doorstep? Right? This is Liverpool. He's walking around and he's talking to Chinese seamen, you know, former seamen. He's talking to all these Chinese and he's saying. Do you know um, the local church? What's that? Have you met the local minister? What's that? You know, and there was no understanding of uh, that there are Chinese actually in the UK and actually quite a large population. Um, much of uh, Chinese Christianity that has grown in the UK since the 1950s has come first through catering and... Um, and students from the Commonwealth of, uh, countries uh, or regions, um, and then more recently uh, through mainland Chinese students, uh, and then even more recently a, a new crop of uh, um, Hong Kongers who have come over. Yeah, um, yeah, and, and largely this is found in the British Chinese churches, but you also see. Um, populations growing in in um, the the more traditional uh, I don't know what the appropriate term is white majority churches um, mm -hmm. that that we have as well. Sarah, good question. I was wondering if you could just reflect, going winding back the clock um, for you personally to your childhood a little bit, because you mentioned um, your experience sort of racism as an adult in mm. the UK, um, and I just wondered how that looked for you. Mm. Um, and also, maybe if you could touch on how you came to faith and, and, and how that was received in your family. Mm. Two great questions. Uh, so the first question being, how do I reflect on my childhood vis-a-vis -vis, um, the racism that I've experienced here and, and uh, in, as an adult? And the second question being, um, when I came to faith, how that related to family dynamics, if, if I understand it correctly. So the first question, um, yeah, that's great. Uh, it's, it's, it's somewhat different, uh, I find. Um, a lot of people say, well, what happens here is basically the same as what happens there in terms of like Chinese or you know, race and things like that. And, and I don't think it's that simple. For instance, you know, if you walk around Edinburgh, you know, you can find lots of uh, uh, restaurants that say, you know, we're oriental cuisine, right? And um, when I was growing up as a child, you know, orientals were rugs. People were Chinese, right? And, and in the, the North American uh, context, I mean, I, I grew up in a, in a place initially which had very few non... Uh, 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 people of Asian background. Today, it's like um, the mecca of, of like East Asian cuisine and culture, and you could find every single t you know, sub you know, kind of restaurant and, and whatnot. Um, but a lot of that, and, and I think a lot of um, you know, Chinese-American, Asian-American um, 
questions are related to um, the, the, the development of the Asian American movement in the 1960s uh, and 70s. So during the Civil Rights Movement, that is when the term Asian American came about. Right? It was a term to create solidarity for people of a, a broad spectrum of backgrounds. Um, and, uh, and, and, you know, it was a term to replace a term like Oriental, right? Whereas when I'm here, uh, I'm told that I'm Oriental or Chinese, and, uh, and I, I know of people of, you know, Korean or Japanese background, and they're called Oriental or Chinese as well, which is like, mm, not quite. <laughs> um, so so I, 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 it is different, um, and in some ways, uh, the U.S. has, uh, th I, I think there's a larger critical mass of people of Chinese background or, or, or East Asian background, and so th that has developed different sociologically between the two contexts. Uh, and also the, the history of racism and institutionalized and legalized racism is different between the two places as well. Um, in terms of your second question, um, yeah, uh, it, it didn't go well with my family. Um, uh, I, I was telling Andy earlier, uh, my, so my first uh, degree was in computer science. I worked as a software engineer for about a decade. Um, and then I went into theology and academic studies. And, and even my last trip uh, back home uh, this past summer, my mom was asking me, so when are you being an engineer again? <laughs> uh, um, the, I, I took a pay cut when I came here, <laughs> for one. Um, but also, um, I think in, in the home, especially because there's this uh, perception that, and, and, and this is true, I think, of, of my upbringing as well as today in China, or, or in, in even here, perhaps, is, is that for, for Chinese, Christianity is a foreign religion. Okay, it's an odd term, I know, but foreign, but uh, even, even here. But Christianity is a foreign religion, and actually the, uh, if you want to go a little more academic into it, the actual term for foreign religion is, is the Chinese character for, uh, for the ocean, okay? And it was coined in the Opium War period. Mm. Okay, so you can get a sense for why that's the case, right? And so my mom, especially, my, my dad as well, but my mom in particular was very much saying, you are Chinese, and we are Buddhists. Technically, not all Chinese are Buddhists, but you are Chinese and you, we are Buddhists. Christianity is a foreign religion, and um, you, know, you, don't, you don't come close to that. Um, and so it's, it's been a journey, uh, and I think my mom's more resolved about it than accepting. My dad, uh, interestingly enough, he, he, he also constantly um, spoke about uh, me going back into engineering, you know, all the way until my, I did my PhD, and he still would ask me about this. And uh, he came out for my graduation in Birmingham, and he gave me, you know, my, my dad didn't write cards or anything like this, you know, he, he, he wrote me a check, you know, for, to congratulate me. And it said, Dr. Alexander Chow. And he was the first person to ever call me that. You know? And so I think there was, for him, he was, it, was, it was a turning point, but still you know, a, a hard one. Because I, I think you know, a lot of that is, is related to this, the sense in which, uh, for Chinese culture in particular, is family and uh, identity is so much intertwined. Um, and... Uh, yeah, if, if somebody is coming from a non-Christian family and turning to Christianity, it, it, it's, a, it's, a, it's a challenge. Um, and I still wrestle with that. Mm. Yep, there was a question.
Yeah, um, so, so the question is how do we um, uh, sort of engage these questions of racism that we, we cause or unwittingly or, or, or not? Um, uh, I, I think the short answer is to get to know people. Mm. Um, uh, uh, I'm, I'm available for meals. No, I mean, but, but seriously, you know, it's to welcome people, you know, and, and, and to really get to know people. Um, and, and I think it's also, you know, to reflect on the language that we use. Mm -hmm. You know, um, I was looking at uh, going back to the UKHK uh, literature, you know, um, uh, and also actually I was looking at the home office literature on, on this, and, and there was a very strong emphasis on how do we help these people integrate into our societies and our churches and all this stuff. And I was like, oh, that's great, you know, in, 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 in many respects, and, you know, especially when a migrant comes in, they, there's a lot of practical needs that there are. But do you realize that British society needs to integrate as well. That it's not just a one-way road. There's a criticism of ethnic enclaves, you know, and these clusterings of people. Well, part of the reason is that those clusters often don't feel welcome. Um, I mean, there, there's probably other reasons for that as well, and there, there's, you know, uh, was it birds of the same feather, you know, flock mm -hmm. together, right? You know, so so there there's definitely that, but by the same time, I think it's 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 a both ways of inter integration. Um, I don't like that word personally, mm -hmm. but but it's uh, I I think it's, it's thinking about how we are shaped by the changes of society. And, 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 and by the people around us, and we, we should be shaped by people. Uh, and, and the only way to get beyond the, the various biases and, uh, is, is to get to know people really well. Um, yeah. Any fellas you want? Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, so <laughs> if I could summarize, um, you're asking what other terms can we use, uh, and and the language that we use uh, if hospitality or integration are problematic. What 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 do we do with that? Uh, and the second kind of a question is, uh, what is my own identity? Uh, that that's a <laughs> okay. So both of those are, are really big questions. Um, uh, so I, I, I guess maybe I can ask the f answer the first question um, 
uh, biblically or, or as a Christian, um, you know, maybe that, that's a good starting point, you know. Uh, uh, so hospitality is the English word that we often uh, use as a translation for, um, I, I, I believe it's a xenophilia, which is the love of a foreigner. Right, or stranger, right? Uh, something, you know, one, some, uh, some kind of translation like that. And that's a very different idea than hospitality. Um, you know, hospitality, like I said, you know, is, you know, you're hospitable to these guests, right? And, you know, this idea of who is a guest, right, I think is, is, um, has problems by itself. But I think if we think about how, you know, Hebrews, for instance, you know, is talking about, you know, this xenophilia what is this you know that you know that you're welcoming these strangers you know it's a love of that stranger um or in um in the old testament when we have this idea of uh you know um uh how do we treat the the foreigner or the sojourner and i think the king james says the sojourner in our in your land and it says treat them like a native and I think the NRSV says, as a citizen, right? I was like, whoa, what does that mean, right? Um, and, and I think there is, so, so I think in terms of the biblical examples, is, is, is very different imagery uh, that we have. That, that is, uh, if I'm not mistaken, that that's, uh, comes from the broader passage that we get the second commandment from, the uh, second greatest commandment, mm -hmm. love your neighbor as yourself, is, is from there. And so, so I think uh, in terms of language, um, I don't like integration, um, you know, to be very frank, uh, uh, or assimilation, that's another, like, really? Um, but, but I think it's, it's to think about the radicalness that the Bible actually has in terms of the relationship between those who are foreign or strangers, treat them like natives, treat them like citizens like native-born individuals. So I think that, that's the first thing. The second question, uh, yeah, uh, <laughs> my, my own identity, um, that's really complex. Uh, so I'm, I'm a, I, I normally say I'm Chinese-American. Sometimes I say I'm Chinese-American exiled in, in Edinburgh. Um, I, I feel very foreign in this land, uh, and I'm reminded I'm, I'm a foreigner also. Um, uh, my um, my wife is a Canadian Chinese, which complicates things by itself. <laughs> Canada is not the U.S. Just to be clear, <laughs> <laughs> um, my son was born in Birmingham. My daughter was born in Edinburgh. She says that she's Scottish and her brother's English. <laughs> 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 I will not touch that conversation too much, um, but um, uh, I, I, I think you know. Increasingly, I'm, I, I've been asking myself, um, while I see myself largely as Chinese American, when I go back to the U.S., I realize I'm not quite American anymore. And so, if I'm not American, am I British? Um, and I think, in many ways, uh, I'm, I'm, I've embraced a lot of British, and in particular Scottish culture, in, in my own uh, um, you know, way of living. Uh, my, my son's favorite dish is haggis bolognese. <laughs> um, very, very nice. Uh, um, but, you know, uh, there, there's a lot that I've embraced about being here, and, and I think that uh, the, the term, you know, you, you said the term "New Scots." Um, it's it's a it's an interesting term. I'm not sure I, am, you know, feel like I embody it. Um, but but I'm I'm definitely becoming more British. Um, my children hold three passports: uh, Canadian, American, and British. Um, but they see themselves as. British or Scottish English, um, you know, as, as you know, and, and I asked them, you know, are you Chinese? And they're like, sure. <laughs> <laughs> they don't know why, 
you know, I, you know, in the last census data, you know, was, uh, we were asking, well, what do you, what do you, what, what do you identify national, you know, as, you know, your national identity? Because that was the census question, right? And we were asking the kids, and they were like, I don't know. <laughs> um, I mean, in, in their schools, uh, there's very few people of, uh, I, I shouldn't even say Chinese, of, of non um, uh, white background. Um, uh, my, my son would kill me if he, he knew I was saying this, but uh, there was one time he came home from school and said, oh, I, Dad, um, I, I, I met a new uh, Chinese friend at school. It's like, oh, really? Who is it? And he told me, and I was like, him? He's Nigerian. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's fine that you want to welcome him and you know, you're good friends with him, but He's not Chinese, actually. Uh, I don't know how you define Chinese now, but but I, and and I think for 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 my children, you know, their understanding of race and stuff at the moment is is very innocent and um, mm. uh, you know uncomplicated. And I, I would love for that to be remain the case. Um, but I know that uh, different sectors of society uh, won't give that same to them. So yeah, I, I I don't have an answer to that one, but it's 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 a complicated one. Alex, I think our time is done, but I want to thank you so much for sharing of yourself or your own story, and um, all the insights you've given us. It's been really rich, and I hope that it serves us well as we go forth and seek to, as Christians, live out uh, a life as we seek to engage and love our neighbour. Um, so thank you. I'll hand back to Mary. Yeah, excellent. Yes, I wanted to echo that. Thanks. Um, thank you so much for your openness and honesty. Um, I think there's a lot for us to be thinking about mm. this afternoon, <laughs> um, which is so, so helpful and definitely something that I think we all need to be doing. We can go into our own communities and um, our friendship groups and our families and bring what we've learned into our lives as well. So thank you so much. And thank you to Andy for interviewing. Um, yeah, so that's the end of Place at the Table for this month. Um, I, yeah, thank you so much for coming. And I hopefully will be um, in touch in a week's time with a questionnaire for you to fill out as well. Tell me about your experience and um, how you think you're going to engage with the event in the future and get some feedback from you. Um, I'm going to close with some prayer and then we can uh, be on our way. <laughs> Dear Lord, we thank you so much for this conversation that we've had the opportunity to listen to. We thank you for Andy and for Alex. We thank you for Alex's openness and his honesty. Um, thank you that he felt comfortable and safe enough to share experiences that he's had um, and that his family has had. We just pray that you'd bless him in his work and bless him in academia, help him to um, yeah, be salt and light um, where you have placed him, help him to um, yeah, do your work for your glory as well, Lord. And we pray too for us as we have listened and learned from this conversation. We pray that you'd help us to apply what we've learned in our communities and our families and our friendship groups and help us to be people who love one another um, with the love which you have shown us. Help us to um, love people who have moved to Scotland as, as citizens, as equal citizens who are um, worthy of mm. your love. And um, yeah, help mm. us to really reflect your love in that as well. We pray that you take us safely to wherever we are going this afternoon and um, yeah, bless us as we think through what we have learned today. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Thank you very much, everyone.